Good tidings, ladies and gentlemen of the Lodge, and welcome back to the channel. Today's topic of discussion is going to be taking us into the world of Kingdom Hearts 3, and more specifically, this final standoff between Sora and Xehanort. I often find myself revisiting this final exchange between the two characters, because I really believe the more you peel behind the layers of what's said, the more you see. However, as the online fanbase is no stranger to, this scene does have some localization differences, but that mostly pertains to Xehanort. Sora is our man of discussion today, and I am here to offer some perspective and a little personal commentary on his final words to Xehanort in this scene. So, before we dive into Sora's words, let's give ourselves a little context reminder by replaying Xehanort's dialogue preceding Sora's words. The light? The symbol of the world's hope was devoured by shadow, leaving nothing but ruin and utter failure. But the first light, the light of Kingdom Hearts, it can give us a new start. An empty world, pure and bright. It wasn't your decision to make. Then whose was it? <sighs> the world needs someone to stand up and lead. Someone strong. To stop the weak from polluting the world with their endless darkness. Someone to dictate their destiny. If so... You're not that person, Xehanort. Mm. A real leader knows that destiny is beyond his control. And accepts that. Xehanort tells us that the world is doomed to fall, and the light, the symbol of the world's hope, is to be devoured by shadow. Leaving, as he puts it, nothing but ruin and utter failure. This calamity is at the cornerstone of Xehanort's motivation. He didn't want to find a way to just prevent the oncoming calamity he speaks of, he wanted to stop calamities altogether. It's then he gives us a further look into what he's thinking when he tells us that the world needs someone to stand up and lead, and in his own words again, someone to dictate their destiny. Meaning, he would be an all-powerful god, that would have ultimate control over all of existence. He could simply guide fate and the whole universe down whatever path he chose, to whatever ends he chose. At the risk of going too far into a tangent, let's take note of this trope Xehanort has had to move his hand like a puppet master. Consider now that the general core of Xehanort's motivations could actually be seen in his little hand movements. The truth is what you see with your eyes, not what you hear. But anyway, yes, there is an incoming calamity. Xehanort wishes to use the Keyblade to unlock Kingdom Hearts, ascend to godhood, and dictate the destiny of all existence, thereby avoiding the calamities. Now, knowing that, let's move on to Sora. Sora considers that even if what Xehanort said was true, that he wouldn't be the one to lead, and that a real leader knows that destiny is beyond his control, and accepts that. Now, some people, understandably so, might say, Hey Sora, Mr. I'm gonna change fate to save my friends, where do you get off saying such a thing? Now, even though I believe there is a valid answer for this, it's a very valid question and one worth exploring, because I believe in a lot of ways the core of the Sora vs. Xehanort showdown really comes down to this subtle difference. Consider this. Sora did indeed commit a nature taboo, but he willingly accepted the price and in a sense died for his actions. Xehanort was in pursuit of so much control that actions such as nature taboos wouldn't come with a price. Sora believes in doing everything within his own power, while Xehanort was always constantly relying on external powers and controlling external powers. Whether it be the bodies and cooperation of Organization 13, or the clash between Ventus and Vanitas, or here at the end relying on the Keyblade and Kingdom Hearts to solve his problems. 
However, Sora has no desire to control anything outside of his own decisions, and sees himself as a small part of something much greater, the exact opposite of Xehanort's approach and beliefs. Bringing this all into one point, there is a difference between controlling destiny and changing it. For example, Sora was able to change his destiny by bringing back everyone from the dead and especially rescuing Kairi here at the end, but as we see, by him meeting his end and dying, he couldn't control his destiny, and he accepted that. Think about that for a minute. If Sora could control destiny in the way Xehanort wanted to, he would make it so that he and Kairi could be together on Destiny Islands like we see here forever. But the last shot of Sora fading away punctuates his moral stance. He accepted his destiny of death in exchange for saving his friends. Sora had no control over his circumstances and him ending up in Quadratum. Thus, he accepted his destiny after changing it, rather than controlling it after changing it. Sora and Xehanort are both willing to go to extreme lengths to meet their goals and aspirations. The primary difference being Xehanort wanted to do it by means of isolated control, while Sora seeks to achieve it via collaboration with his friends. Xehanort believed that the world needed someone like him to guide existence in the right direction. But Sora does not see that as a viable solution. If all of existence was under Xehanort's thumb and Sora got to play with his friends all day, it would be no different than Roxas in the Data Twilight Town with Ansem the Wise controlling the outcomes. And we all saw how cruel that was at the end of the day. In a sense, Xehanort would create on the surface what would look like a fantasy land, but in reality would be a prison. A prison of rigid control, lacking free will and change. Sora doesn't seem to believe in such a world. While he wishes to exercise his own powers and his own will, he does not wish to have control over others in the way Xehanort does. Sora accepts his humility before greater powers such as Kingdom Hearts. Xehanort did not. So to round it all out here, the fundamental difference between the two and the core of their philosophical differences comes down to this. Xehanort wanted to prevent the incoming calamities by ascending to godhood and controlling every last thing about existence. Sora accepts that the outcome of his actions are beyond his control, and in accepting that truth it allows him to pursue whatever his heart tells him. Sora can certainly change fate, but he cannot control the exact outcome, and that is a truth he not only accepted, but one that he learned here at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. Ladies and gentlemen, sickos and normies, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you agree or disagree, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more Kingdom Hearts content. And with all of that said, you all be good to yourselves and each other. And I will see all of you beautiful sickos and normies next time.